Namaste, blessings and greetings, my angels. It is Tigra bringing you your karmic reading for the month of April 2021. I'll be closing out today all your general readings for the month of April. And then we'll be tapping in towards next week, your mid-month updates. So following this, you will have your color energy as well as the um, color combined with floral energy especially as we tap into spring flowers and herbs can bring you a lot of energy it's great to use flowers and herbs in your spiritual work or along your path so i'll be combining a floral herbal and color energy reading and then that will end your general readings for this month um, that I've already posted so you can now backtrack into the playlist or what have you and then look forward to the updates to these particular readings in the next week or so as always cause a blessing prayed for before each reading this is on your karmic lesson or the karmic energy that could be surrounding people that you are associated with or people you have dealt with in the past and as you can see karma is a mother something right so let's see what the messages are these are general messages this is for entertainment purposes only take what you will and leave the rest behind because it may be meant for someone else okay using my deck one message definitely wanted to come out and that is I knew that something was up with you and then wasn't too hard to figure out since you're so sloppy. Wow. Okay. I knew that something was up with you and then wasn't too hard to figure out since you're so sloppy. So this is definitely a message from you to that one that got away or the one that you're with now that you've had your suspicions about, you know, guys are the worst when it comes to cheating i don't even know why they bother doing it because they are sloppy they they're just so messy they're messy with their text messages their dm their instagrams they're just messy they're messy with their lies with their homeboys covering for them you know leaving out saying they're going to the store and like five hours later they're still not back come on girls we've all been there whether we've been divorced single married separated I'm sure we've all had these type of tricks played upon us. So this message is definitely coming out because this person that is playing these games on you, their number is coming up. And luckily enough, your angels and your guides are on your side and they're revealing to you because sometimes these things need to be revealed to us because we don't want to admit it to ourselves when someone is cheating on us or someone is going against the grain or someone is intentionally hurting and lying to us in front of our face so this is to confirm that yes i knew something was up with you and them sometimes you know certain relationships and certain friendships they're not friendships they are relationships they're undercover getting down doing whatever they're doing but you know when a relationship or the behavior or the actions that women and men take with your partner or something out of the friendship zone. When it's not polite, when it's not in a good taste or manner. You know because you're in a romantic situation with this person or you've been in a romantic situation with this person. So you know how they move. You know and you can see and feel their body language. And when someone is into them or if they're into someone else, and especially when they're trying to hide it, the more they try to hide it, especially if they're all in your presence, the more it's going to reveal themselves. And us Sagis being as spiritual and as gifted as we are, and as intuitive as we are, will pick up on this instantly. So you don't have to say anything. It will be all in your body language and how you move around this other person. So... For you guys that are trying to cheat or misinform or lie or be delusional to your Sagittarius partner, this is a message to you. Guess what? You're not fooling anyone. You're so sloppy with it that, you know, even a blind person could see, so to, so to speak. You also get the card. Maybe this relationship is the karma we both had to go through. Payback is a bitch. Some relationships did not the best. 
some relationships we wonder like god why you you know why are you we, we blame it on god right like why did you bring this person into my life and it doesn't make sense when you're going through it but once you've gotten through it and you can look back in retrospect you see why there was something that you needed to learn from this person or something in your own behavior that mirrored in this person that you had to grow and learn from so some relationships they are comic it's not because you are meant to be together you know and have this fantasy of a relationship but it's meant to be that energetically and spiritually for this moment in time there was something that both of you needed to learn and you both had that opportunity to have that connection to give that lesson to each other and then once that commitment or that karmic lesson has been dealt out the relationship ends and you move on so karmic relationships are just for that for that karmic lesson they're really not relationships that you're going to stay in for a long time and most karmic relationships yes they're painful because we see or we experience the bad things and the, the bad vices and the things that we do to other people that we really don't want done unto us. You also get the message, am I that bad? You won't forgive me. So someone who did you harm in the past, broke your heart, lied, cheated on you, they could be going through it right now. They're looking for forgiveness from you, but you just don't have it in your heart to give. And they're saying, well, dang, was I that bad? Like, did I really do something so terrible that I can't be forgiven? And in Saji's cases, we will love you and give you everything that we have from our heart and soul. But once we close that door on you, I mean... It would take like the third coming of the Father to release us to open that door back. So yes, sometimes things are that bad that you have done to a Sag that there is just no forgiveness. We can, we might forgive you in the spiritual sense that we'll forgive you in our prayers and to the universe. But to physically say we forgive you to you and give you that satisfaction to think that you got over on us that we can't do so yes if a sag is not forgiving you you are or you have been that bad to them but the underlying message you will reap what you sow everything comes full circle in life i don't understand why people do bad things or why bad things happen to good people but the seeds that you sow that will be the just return that you get. When you sow seeds of love, even though people in the interim might hurt you, trust me, those seeds of love will grow and flourish and you will get love and good deeds returned. The things as, as a human that we tend to forget is that the good things that we do for people, the full cycle of it, when it comes back around, we never get that good back from that person in which we did that goodness to or for. It will come back to us through strangers, through our family, through situations that we have luck and prosperity in life with. But we will never necessarily get it from that person. And for many of us, that's what we're expecting. If I do good for you, you'll do good for me. But that's not how it goes. The goodness that you pour into other people, into situations, will come back around. You will sow what you reap, but don't expect it to come back from the same person or energy or action that you put it into. And just the same with negativity and bad things. When people hurt you, when people lie to you, when people go out of their way to destroy your character, to steal from you, to betray you, they're sowing seeds of hate and bigotry and anger. And this too shall come back to them. Again, not from you but from someone else. And many people can't understand why they get into relationships or things happen to them in their life. And they're like, oh my God, what did I do to deserve this? What did you do? Well, let's, <laughs> let's go through the ticker tape, right? And then if they really sat back in life and thought about the misdeeds that they've done to other people, 
they'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. But because they're expecting that same bad deed that they did to you to come back from you, this is why they can't understand when it comes from another person, but I didn't do anything wrong to this person. Why are they hurting me? No, you didn't do anything wrong to that person, but you did something wrong to that Sag. So that's the way of the cycle. And there's no... There's no quick way, there's no magic, there's nothing to avoid karmic lessons or sowing from what you reap. And many people, again, it takes them a lifetime to understand that. We also get the message, we'll have no success at work or place of employment. So someone who either hurt you or you hurt, because this could be your karmic energy as well, you, you're not going to have any success. Someone is trying to look for work. They're trying to get a career or business started. And it's like they feel it's Friday the 13th every time they try to do something. They're not going to have that success that they want or seek. The things that they have to sow. That they, you know, that they're reaping for now. This karmic energy behind what is going on, why they're not being successful. Followed by people are leaving them out a lot. This particular person that is going through this karmic return or lesson is being left alone by many people. They're trying, they're knocking on doors for help and for guidance. And at every turn, they're getting rejected. Phone calls are not being un, uh, answered. Texts are not being returned. And this is what is going on in their world right now. So they feel left out. They feel like they're in the cold. They feel that people are like intentionally or avoiding them and when you've heard enough people in life you know we live in a very small world even though it seems big and the world is even smaller with technology so when you hurt people or if you're a person that goes around sabotaging and just being a bad business person a bad lover eventually Word gets through the grapevine, and especially with technology, it gets through the internet, the chat rooms, the date rooms, the date sites. It gets around. Word gets around. You never know who you know might know someone else. So this is what this person is going through. A lot of people are leaving them out in the cold because their reputation, all the bad stuff they've done and said is catching up to them. Find me with the message, will not find love in this lifetime. This one particular person, and for some of you, it could be more than one person. Love is never going to really beckon or fall upon them. Either because they themselves don't have genuine love, or because they've been so narcissistic, they've been so cruel, they've been so hateful, they've just been so manipulative, in every single relationship that has come to them. So they can't expect love and joy and happiness when all they've spewed is the negative. And again, it's about this coming back around, you know, so you dish out, so shall be returned to you. So this person, no matter how many partners they go to, no matter, how, no matter how many times they try to change, no matter how many times they fool themselves into thinking that they're, they're a better version of themselves, they're never really going to find true love because they themselves don't have the, the capacity to love. So they're always going to be searching. They're never going to be happy. And if they contact you and tell you and brag about their new relationships, that's all it is. It's just bragging and boasting to kind of one-up you, but they're not really happy. So when they do that, know that they're lying to you yet again. They just want you to feel like they're doing good because they don't want to admit the truth that they're not. Because they're embarrassed. But the underlying message will have no wishes come true. So this person or, or persons in your life who are just really effed up people, I mean, there's no other way to say it. 
nothing, the Midas touch is not upon them. Anything they do, any person they see, anything they try to interact with, it's going to have negative results. People are not going to stay in their lives. People are not truly going to commit and love them. Their desires and petitions and their wishes for their life are not going to come true. And again, it all has to do with the way how they've lived their life and how they've treated others in life. Let's get a clarifier on that. Abundance. This is what they want. They want abundance. They want to be happy. Maybe a year from now, something might happen in their life where they might feel there's a possible change. But I don't think that's going to happen. They need to reconsider who they are as a person and what they've done and why they're in this negative karmic energy. And finally, there's no need to worry. This person is not going to come back into your life and nor do you want this person. They will try to compromise with you to maintain a relationship or friendship with you. But the final message is in you in, in working towards improving your life and your health and your prosperity, that is not something you're going to be looking towards. Many of you are in recovery from the energies and the negativity of this past person. I am not over you is the message they want to say to you. Despite everything that they've done, they're still infatuated with you. They miss hearing your voice. But they also know that you don't share the same values. With the final message... They don't know why this happened, but they do. They know why this happened because they're not a good person. They're not a good person. They wouldn't have all this negative karma placed upon them if they were a good person. Right? Let's pick three more clarifiers for this karmic energy. Communication. This person will try to communicate with you. They might feel that Sag is the only one that might leave that door open or entertain their conversation or communicate with them when others are closing the door on them. They feel that you're loving and compassionate. This is why they feel that even as terrible as they might have been to you, that they can still come to you for compassion. They feel that you're vulnerable. And with the sign of the baby carriage, some of them feel you're vulnerable because this person and you shared children or share children or co-parent children or you've had a child for them. And when you co-parent with someone or you've been with someone and you have a child with them, it is a lifetime connection and some people will use that. They will use that as a bargaining tool. They will use that to manipulate you and that's what this person may do. With the underlying message, faith. But they don't understand that your strong belief, your faith, your spirituality, your growth, your maturity, your endurance, and just you knowing who they are now. You will surpass anything that they will try to bring to you. You, along with the others, are not going to have an open heart you too have walked out on them and you will continue to keep them at a bay. If this is someone that you do share a child with, you will deal with them for the sake of the child. But outside of that, you will not entertain anything romantic. You will not get into their romantic problems or issues. You will just keep it simply on a parental level. So this has been the karmic reading, the general reading for this month of April 2021. We'll come back, like I said, in a week or so when we do the mid-month update to see where this energy lies. But again, remember, if you want good karma in your life and those in your life, if they want good karma, then sow the seeds of righteousness, of love, of compassion to others. So that can be returned to you as well. Blessings and namaste.